All right, problem one, we have the integral of the cosine of 3x dx. And to integrate this, we just find the antiderivative of this function. So you want to find the function whose derivative, whose derivative is the cosine of 3x. So since we have the cosine function, the derivative of the sine function is, co is the cosine function. So we have the sine of 3x. And let's make sure to divide this by three, because if we took the derivative of the sine of 3x, we would have to multiply by three, and those threes will cancel. And let's not forget our constants. And let's see what we got then. Our answer would be C, one third, the sine of 3x plus C. Problem two, the limit of 2x to the sixth plus 6x cubed over 4x to the fifth plus 3x cubed is. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to approach this because if you were to plug in zero straight into this, you would get, you know, zero plus zero over zero plus zero. So you would get basically, you would get an um, undefined function or undefined expression and in determinate form. So one technique that maybe you covered, you did in calculus is just divide everything by x to some power and then work your way from there. So, so we, have, uh, we have x to the sixth, x to the third, and x to the fifth. So what we're gonna do is let's divide everything by x cubed. So we have two x to the sixth over x cubed. That'll just be two x cubed plus six, x cubed over x cubed would just be six over, then divide four x to the fifth by x cubed. That would give us four x squared. And three x cubed divided by x cubed will be plus three. Okay, so here now, let's see what's going on. If you were to plug in zero into x here, you would get, two times zero or zero plus six on top, and then four times zero plus three in the bottom. And so we have six over three, which is just two. And so the answer is D. Problem three, we have the fu piecewise function broken up at the point X is two. So, on this first interval, it's gonna be equal to x squared minus three x plus nine. And after two, it'll be equal to kx plus one. So we wanna, we wanna find a value of k if it's possible that we can make f continuous at x equals two. So for it to be continuous, that essentially means that these two functions will have to um, basically, they're gonna, they're gonna equal each other. They're gonna, they're gonna both go to the same point when x is two. So let's set them equal to each other first. And again, since, since we're looking at x is two, we just plug two, in, two into this equation for x and then solve for k. So we get two squared four minus three times two minus six plus nine equals two k plus one four minus six, negative two plus nine, seven, two K plus one, take away one, divide by two, and we would get K is three. And so our answer would be simply C. Problem four, if F of X equals the cosine of four X all to the third power, then F prime of X equals Okay, so this is an example where we have to use chain rule. Remember, um, for the trig functions, they, they have a special way of writing their powers. So this is actually the same as putting this entire group in parentheses all to the third power. So you have three functions here. You have the cubed function, the cosine function, and the 4x function. So when we wanna take the derivative of this, we first take the derivative of the cube function. Using power rule, we'll have three times the cosine of four x to the second multiplied by the derivative of the cosine function, 
which is the negative sine of 4x, multiply by the derivative of 4x, which is just 4. And then cleaning this up, this will be negative 12 sine of 4x times the cosine of 4x all to the second power. Now let's see what we got. So our answer looks like it would be, it would be B. They just have it in a different order, but it's all good because you're just multiplying. All right, problem five. The function f given by f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x minus minus 3x squared minus 12x has a relative minimum at x equals. So, so we'll, a function has a relative minimum, so it looks something like this. When the derivative at that point would be zero, because that'll be the slope of a horizontal tangent line. So we want to take the derivative and find where there are potential critical points. And then to see if it has a relative minimum, there's a couple, there's, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can um, study the, the behavior of the derivative or you can look at the second derivative. But first, let's just take the first derivative. F prime of X will be six X squared minus six X minus 12. Find the critical values by setting this equal to zero. So zero equals six X squared minus six X minus 12. Factor out of six. Factoring that six times X minus two times X plus one. All right, so there are critical points at X is two and x is negative one. Now, we want to study the, the behavior of the graph at each of these points. So what you can do is take the second derivative and evaluate it for x is two and for x equals negative one. And if the second derivative is positive, that means the graph would be concave up. If f double prime is positive, and then, 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 and then that lets you know it, it has a relative minimum there because it's concave up at that point. So taking the second derivative, f double prime of x would be 12x minus six. And let's evaluate this for two. f double prime of two would be 12, 24 minus six, 18. So it is positive. So then there will be a relative minimum at x equals two. And it's only given us one answer. It's not saying there could be both. So we actually don't even have to check the second one, but let's, let me just show you what would happen. So we take the second derivative and evaluate it for negative one. So f double prime of negative one would be negative 12 minus six, negative 18. And see, this is negative, And that lets you know the graph is concave down. So it makes sense. There wouldn't be relative minimum there. So the answer is definitely C.